I didn't see you there. Welcome to the night show of Nick's Grammatics. And as usual, I'm going to be your host tonight, Nicolás Martínez. Yes, thank you. Thanks, everybody. I love you too, brother. So, we're going to talk tonight about mood and case in grammatics, of course. So, we have to understand what is the grammatical mood. The grammatical mood is how verbs change to make sense in a sentence, and it's always from the speaker's perspective. There are five types of grammatical mood. There is the indicative, imperative, interrogative, conditional, and subjective. So, we have an example here of what is the indicative mood. Makes a statement. Cheer the fuck, man. Then we have the imperative mood. Makes a command or request. Hi, sir. Hey, bro! Hey! Pass me! Pass me! We have also the interrogative mood. It's just a question being asked. Hey, brother! What's up, brother? The one on the other side. Oh, yeah! Let's go! Iron family! We have the conditional mood. Expresses a proposition. Hey, Nico! And finally, the subjunctive mood. To explore conditional or imaginary situations. Hey, Ro, have you ever thought what will happen if pigs fly? <laughs> now we know what the grammatical mood is, but we're not done yet. We also have the grammatical case. But for this, we have an interview with one of the greatest scientists of Monsters University. Roll that interview. Hello everybody. So, I'm here with one of the greatest scientists from Monsters University, Edei Joel. So, he's going to tell us what are the grammatical cases, or what is the grammatical case. So, sir, can you please introduce yourself? Good day, I am Edei, and I'm going from Monsters University. I will talk to you about grammatical case. Grammatical case is a function that tells you what a word does what in a sentence. It will, in other words, it tells you if a word is being possessed, if a word is being the subject of a sentence, if it's being the object of a verb, or is it being the object of a preposition. Excuse me, sir, but what do you mean by object of the verb? Well, the object of a verb will be what is receiving the verb. So, if you are walking the street, you are the subject, walking is obviously the verb, and the street is being the object because it is being walked upon. Okay, okay. In English, cases work differently, while in other languages, words are conjugated to indicate its case. English just modifies an entire word. It has a different set of words to indicate the case. It has its pronouns. Its pronouns carry by themselves cases. They carry the nominative case, the oblique case, and the genitive case, each being the subject, the object, and being possessed. That's it. Thank you very much for your time, sir. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you. So, we're going back to the studio for more of Nate's Romance. The new Dinos, the brand new cereal from Pemex. Its new flavor will transport you to an old Jurassic era. With real petroleum of the Alaskan seas, Boo now, Giordino's. Roar! Okay, everybody, so that will be all for tonight's show. Thank you very much. What? Oh, we have an incoming call. So, who is it? Uh, yeah, hi, Nick. I'm Fernando. I'm an aspect specialist. Um, I would like to tell you what aspect is, so I'll send you some examples. Hope you enjoy. Well, the aspect basically tells you if the action has been completed or not. For example, the simple aspect or indefinite aspect tells you that an action happened at some point in time, but doesn't specify if it has been completed or not. The perfect aspect or completed aspect tells you that the action has been completed or will be completed. The progressive aspect tells you that the action started, but has not been completed. 
The perfect progressive aspect tells you about a continuous action that has or will be completed. Okay, so thanks, Fernando. And now, that will be all for tonight's show. Thank you, everybody, and see you next time in Next Grammatics.